What's amazing about what God is doing right now within her voice, or really within our life right now, is God is linking us with kindred spirits, linking us with people that are like-minded throughout the entire country. Mighty and powerful women. And I didn't know her, but um, last night when prayer started and, and they were all praying, and Jonathan and Bianca and Jenny and Pastor Greg and Pastor Bobby started praying, and this gal started praying. I'm like, I don't know who that is. Who is that lady? And she's a powerhouse for Jesus, amen? She's a change agent for this community, and she's a local, amen? So will you please help me welcome Katie Souza. Come on up here, Katie. Okay, go ahead and go back to your seat, but stay in the presence. Don't just like think, okay, we're going to shift because we're not, because we are going to be doing a lot of activations all throughout my session. So you're going to get ready to interact. This is going to be an interactive session so that people can get healed. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And I want to honor Jenny and pastors of this church, home church, and everyone that's making this possible. Can we give them a big round of applause for what Destiny Church has done to partner with Her Voice Movement? Thank you, Lord. Okay, I'm going to go right into it. My time is very short. Um, I'm going to start by playing a prison promo, but I'm going to tie it into what we're going to accomplish here today with Her Voice Movement and with what's going on in the world right now as we speak. Um, I, I don't know if some of you know this. If you don't know me, raise your hand if you don't know who I am. Wow. Okay, where have you guys been? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm partners with Dog the Bounty Hunter and his wife, Francie. Francie, would you please stand up? This is Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife. Could you please give her a hand clap? My hubby's here too. Love you, honey. Okay. And I'm partners with Dog and Francie and myself and our entire team of like 50 volunteers. We go into prisons all across the United States. So I'm going to just show you a little look at that, and I'm going to tie it in to what's happening with this movement against our children. Can we roll the clip? You're finding your call in here. Okay, I found my call in prison. Dog became Dog the Bounty Hunter in prison. He threw the handcuffs on the ground and said the magic words. Hook him up, bounty hunter. God showed up in the middle of that. And he said, I'm not done with you. I've got a destiny for you. Six years. I'm going to rise you up. I created you, and you're mine. So no pain? No pain. You don't feel the tour? No. And it doesn't hurt? It doesn't hurt. People say, Dom, where do you get the experience to tell these guys about Jesus? It's gone? It's all the way gone. This is your time. But now I want you to get up. This is your moment. and be who I've called you to be. So the man you saw last there that said it's gone, we'll show some stills of him. He got his face blown off with a shotgun. His, he was all deformed on this side of his face. They had to take metal bolts, not screws, bolts, and bolt his jaw into place because it blew off his face. But during the meeting, <laughs> God uh, melted the metal. Yeah. He took out a screw here totally. He made these into little shards, and only one bolt remained. And we know it happened for sure because he couldn't feel it, for one. But for two, three days later, he went to visiting. And when you come out of visiting, they x-ray you to make sure you're not sneaking back in a phone or some sort of contraband. And the guy running the x-ray had been running it for 23 years. And he x-rayed that man and he said, what happened? Did you go to the doctor and have them take them out? 
Can we give God a praise for that? We see the most incredible miracles in prison. There was a woman in there that three razor blades she had swallowed to try to kill herself. The doctors could only extract two of them. There was one still stuck in her esophagus. And when she pushed on it, she could actually feel it stabbing her fingers. But the Lord completely dissolved the metal and took it out. We see tumors disappear. We see metal disappearing. This is all very normal because God is doing big stuff now in the planet. Amen. Now I'm going to show you some B-roll, and I'm going to tie this to what we're doing. After we did that men's uh, meeting, uh, we went to a women's meeting at Chilicothe Prison. There was 520 women in there. They had to draw their names out of a hat because that's all the room will fit because 800 women signed up to come. When we came in, they exploded for, like, for appreciation that we would bother to come see them. And at the end of uh, Saturday morning, when we taught on trauma... And how it wounds the soul and lets demonic powers come in and assault you. We called for a, a, a call, for an altar call, for anybody who had been molested, trafficked, abused in any way. And 350 women stood up and flooded the front altar. Are we showing that B-roll? Let's show that B-roll. You won't be able to all see it clearly, but the reason why the rest of the women didn't come up, now let's bring down the audio on the back of that. The reason why the rest of the women didn't come up is just because there wasn't any room. Because I'm telling you, 90% or more of the women in prison have been trafficked, molested, abused, or traumatized in some severe way. Now, here's how I want to tie it in with her voice movement. A lot of those women, you really can't see them, and I wish I'd grab stills of as many women as I can, but a lot of them are what we call the boy girls. What does that mean? These are women that are engaged in homosexual activity in the prison, and many of them have actually, they're, they're, they become so oppressed and controlled by a demonic spirit, a shape-shifting witchcraft spirit that their physical bodies are changing. They get barrel-chested like a man. Their arms change shape and hands change shape like a man. They cut their hair like a man. They're, and I'm not saying anything against short hair, okay? They, their voices change and become more manly. Their mannerisms change. This is a shape-shifting witchcraft spirit that is also going after our children. Trying to convince them that they were born in the wrong body. And that by acting as an opposite sex, they're actually doing what they were really, what they were really designed to be. A lie. It's a lie. These girls, a huge percentage of them, and, and if they're not, if they are not actually totally turned themselves over to being male, which those women are the most desired women in prison. Every other woman wants one of those women. The women that are becoming a man. If they're not doing that, they're, they're at least what we call gay for the stay. Just gay while they're there. So they engage in this homosexual activity. And it's all, now if you interview these women, 90 plus percent of them, if you ask them this question, were you traumatized sometime in your life? Were you abused sometime in your life? Were you molested sometime in your life? The answer is yes. So you understand that trauma fractures the soul. It actually puts a, a breaking, a fracturing inside your inner man, your mind, will, and emotions. And that opening allows that witchcraft Jezebelic spirit to come in and bewitch their mind to make them believe that they need to be the opposite sex. Did you hear what I said? We all need, listen to me, we all need to have prosperity of soul. The Bible says in 3 John 1, I pray that you would prosper in every way and that your body may keep well even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. Do you understand all the success of your life? Not even precluding what we just talked about. Your, your success with your family, success with your relationships, success in your business, success in anything you do, success in the unity of your church, success in, 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 in your ministry, reaching out to the nations, depends on you becoming prosperous in soul. Only when you become
become prosperous in soul? Can you help your children become prosperous in soul? You see, the same... Oh, The same spirit that is invading our children is able to stay there because we have something in us that's in common with it and we can't kick it out. When you have been hit, when you've been wounded by trauma, that same spirit comes upon you. And Jesus said in John 14, 30, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. When you have something in you, in your mind, in your will, in your emotions, something in your soul that's in common with the demonic power, that you don't have power over it. It has power over you, and it has power over your children. We must pursue prosperity of soul. Lay your hand on your belly and say it right now. Holy Spirit, flood me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, search out the woundedness in my inner man and fill it with your presence. Heal me of the effects of every traumatic situation that I've ever lived through. Oh God, by the power of your comforter, by the power of your spirit, flood my soul right now. My mind, my will, my emotions, and heal me of every damaging effect, of every excruciating trauma that I've ever dealt with in my life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now say amen and give God a praise. Give him a bigger praise. Um, if I can get my bottle of water, that'd be great. Thank you so much. So how do we get healed? Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus and Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. And not only Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit and a power called dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. What is that? Acts 1.8 says that you will receive power. Everybody say dunamis. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Do you understand something? Holy Ghost is not power. Holy Ghost is a person that leads you into deep relationship with Jesus Christ. But when you received Holy Spirit, he didn't come alone. He brought power with him. You will receive power. Everybody say dunamis. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. What does this have to do with trauma? Let's look at the meanings from the Thayer's Concordance of the word power. It's dunamis. The first meaning is this, the power to perform miracles. The power to perform miracles. Meaning, anytime you lay hands on somebody, you pray for somebody, and they get a miracle, their body gets healed. Dunamis is at work. Second meaning of dunamis. Ready? Here it is. The power and influence which belongs to riches and wealth. You know, you'll prosper in being healthy even as your soul prospers. So when your soul gets prospered by dunamis, guess what happens? You prosper. And are brought into health because your because your because your soul because your soul because your soul has been prospered. You're wondering why you're broke like a joke. It's maybe because you're broken here. You're broken here. But when this gets fixed, you're going to start to prosper, even as your soul prospers. God can't trust you. God can't trust you with that money until He knows that your mind, will, and emotions are in right. Right with him. You're going to think right about the money. You're going to make right decisions about the money. You're going to make, have right emotions about the money. Amen? Now let's look at the third meaning of dunamis. Ready? Put it up. It means this. Moral power and excellence of soul. Everybody say dunamis means excellence of soul. What does that mean for you? That means that God in his greatness and his goodness has supplied you with a 24 and 7 power station living within you that never leaves. It's the Holy Spirit and power that always enables you to immediately get healed of the effects of every single trauma you're dealing with.
That should have been even bigger than that. And I'll tell you why. Don't you know that the devil is stirring up storms right now? How many of you can relate to the fact that the devil has been putting wave after wave after wave after wave of storm waves upon you to fill up your boat so it will try to sink? Who's having the storms of trauma right now? Raise up your hands really big. Let me see it. 90% of the people in here. The devil makes storms. He made storms for Job. So the cattle went away, the servants got killed, the children got killed, his body gets hit with, with a sickness, and then what happens? 23 times in the rest of the book of Job, Job says this about how his soul felt from all that trauma. He said, my soul is vexed, my soul is mourning, my soul is pouring out. He was expressing the pain he felt in his soul from all the trauma that he experienced. Who made those storms? The devil. The devil is making more storms now than he ever has in this planet. And what is he trying to do? He's trying to get you wounded. He's trying to get you so traumatized that your soul will be wounded. Your soul will be fractured. And then what will happen? You will have something in you that's in common with Satan, so he'll have power over you. Did you hear what I said? Put your hand on your heart and your belly. Say, Lord God, I have the Holy Spirit and dunamis living inside of me. I release the Holy Spirit's flows of living water, its dunamis power to go and flood my mind, to bring healing of all the memories from all that trauma, to flood my will so my choices won't be controlled by the pain in my soul to flood my emotions so that my emotions will be completely healed, not governed by trauma and pain and grief and depression and anxiety, but filled with the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, Kindness, uprightness, self-control, gentleness. I receive the flow of the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. And I am excellent of soul. 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 Make it a rap. <laughs> I am excellent of soul. Now turn to your neighbor and say, you are excellent of soul. Turn to your other neighbor. You are excellent of soul. Now say, we all are excellent of soul. Now give a shout to the Lord. Look, Jesus healed with dunamis. You guys don't even understand the necessity of this power that's residing in you right now. Put up Acts 10.38. This is what God said about Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Everybody say dunamis. Who went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Do you understand? Jesus healed people through the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. Remember the first meaning of dunamis, the power to perform miracles. How do you think Jesus did all that mir those miracles? Holy Spirit and dunamis power. Now when he's laying hands on people, he's laying hands on people, and he's releasing his power, he's speaking it, and it's being released, people weren't just, you know, having the lame walk and, and ears open and all of that. Because, listen to me very carefully. Because Jesus was anointed with a Holy Spirit and dunamis power, when he would release it on a person who was sick in their body, they weren't just having a miracle performed, they were becoming excellent of soul. And we know that because the Bible says, you will prosper and be in health. 
even as your soul prospers. So Jesus will release Tunimus. They would become excellent of soul, and then they would prosper. And be in health, even as your soul prospers. You want, a, you want an example? The woman with the issue of blood. You remember how much trauma she went through? Put it up on the board and pulse through all these scriptures in Mark 5. It says, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. That's a long time to be sick. Next verse. Who has suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She suffered under their hands, the Bible said. That is massive trauma. You spend all your money trying to get healed. You've been sick for 12 years. You've been rejected by society. You're considered unclean. You go to all these physicians. You don't get any better. You get worse. That's trauma, 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 trauma. How does she get healed? She fights her way through the crowd. That's why we're doing the activation, so you can fight your way through the noise in your mind. So you can fight your way through your circumstances. She fights her way through the crowd. She reaches out. She touches the hem of Jesus' garment. And then what happens? It says, he felt power. Everybody say dunamis. She felt power power flow out and immediately the blood source dried up you know why the blood source dried up because jesus used the holy spirit and dunamis and dunamis means what no it means excellence of soul say it again say it again say it again say it again, say it again. when she touched the hem Dunamis power flowed into her, and it didn't just go to where the bleeding was. It saturated into her soul. She became excellent of soul. And then you know what happened? She was prospered and brought into health even as her soul was prospered. Lay your hand on your belly right now. Say, I'm being prospered, and I'm being brought into health. Even as my soul prospers, say, my soul is prospering right now because it's being flooded with the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. So I'm becoming excellent of soul. My mind, my will, my emotions are being healed are being made whole. They're destroying every pocket of trauma that's been stored inside my inner man by the flooding of the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. I decree I'm prospering in my soul right now. I'm prospering right now, right now. Lay your hands on your, on your neighbor. Say, you're prospering in your soul right now. Dunamis. Say, dunamis is filling you right now. Come on, release dunamis on them. Say, you're becoming excellent of soul. Come on, say it. Say it. Say it. Say, you're becoming excellent of soul. You're becoming excellent of soul. You're becoming excellent of soul. Come on, say it. Say it. Say it. I'm becoming excellent of soul. Ho, 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 ho. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want to show you another short miracle. This woman, she's a boy girl. You'll see her. She's so cute. But she's a boy girl. She's one of the girls that is in a gay relationship and acts like a boy. God heals her and makes a bullet in her leg melt. Let's watch it. If you were to stomp your foot right now, would it hurt? Is it that leg? Father, I thank you. Now I release the angel right now and I suspend time. I command that bullet to dissolve. I speak to that bullet right now. You dissolve in the name of Jesus. And right now I command the bones and the muscles and the tendons to grow back. Now I want you to start stomping. <laughs> Do you have any pain anymore? Do you have any pain anymore? No, You're not no pain no more? She 
Seven years. So uh, what happened? I prayed for you, right? And then I told you get up, and I told you to stomp your foot. What happened when you got up and stomped your foot? I ain't feel it. You don't feel it at all. All right. So we have a metal detector. See how it turns red? That means there's metal. Okay. Ready? See it? Okay. Ready? Now, when you pulled up your pant leg, you sat down here and you started digging, digging inside your leg. How come? I was trying to see where it go. <laughs> so you're telling me that you used to be able to feel the bullet in your leg? Yes, ma'am. You actually said the words, I, I play with it. Yes, ma'am. Or you just like, you know, move it around. Move it around. Move it around. Yeah. And you couldn't do it. Put, put, your, put, put your, your foot up on my leg right now. Okay, now, can you dig for it? Or you gotta sit down normal? It's gone. <laughs> gone. How you do that? <laughs> Come on, give a big shout. It's Jesus that does it. It's Jesus that does it. Hallelujah. Part of the prayer work I did on that woman you saw me when just a shot of me praying for her, but you couldn't hear me. I'm praying for her trauma to be healed. I've seen probably 300 miracles now, and every single one of them, the first prayer, the first part of the prayer, no matter what else I prayed, no matter what else the Holy Spirit told me, I pray the trauma off of them. Do you understand they can't prosper and be in health until their soul is prospered? Put your hand on your belly again. Now we're going to put Ephesians 3.16 up on the board and we're going to all decree it together. So let's put that up on the board really quick. Ephesians 3.16. This is Paul. Let's read it together on three. Ready? May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Okay, now, you know what this is talking about, don't you? This is Paul praying that you would be what? Strengthened and reinforced. Where? By what? Mighty power. Everybody say dunamis. He's praying for you to be strengthened and reinforced by dunamis. Where? In your inner man. That is not your spirit. Your spirit is in, your spirit is Christ in you. It doesn't need any help. That's talking about your soul. He says... I pray that you be strengthened and reinforced by dunamis power, which makes you excellent of soul, inside your soul, via the what? Holy Ghost. Now. Whoa. Oh, yeah, baby. Now we're going to rock and roll. Ha. Put your hand on your heart. This time put your other hand on your head. And say, Lord God, I decree that by... The flow and ministry of the Holy Spirit that I'm becoming strengthened and reinforced in my inner man by the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. I'm becoming excellent of soul right now because the Holy Spirit lives in me 24 and 7. And he's releasing like a river of living water, dunamis power, into my mind to shut down every evil memory of every traumatic situation. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release through the laying on of hands 
the power of the Holy Ghost. Dunamis power. And my mind is excellent. Now put your hand on your heart and say the same thing. Let's have Ephesians 3.16 back up on the board, guys. Say, now my broken heart that was fragmented by major crises, attacks, assaults, abuse, molestation, gossip, abandonment, rejection. My broken heart is being healed supernaturally right now by the Holy Ghost and by dunamis power. God's bringing the pieces of my heart together right now in the name of Jesus. Now we're gonna put that up. I want you to lay hands on your the person next to you and I want you to decree this scripture over them. Go, go, go. power is actually fire it is Matthew 27 Jesus tells his disciples go wait tarry in the upper room for the power everybody say dunamis from on high to come down and clothe you he said wait in the upper room for dunamis what form did it take it sure did now put up X Jamar put up X if you read it in the Amplified, it says when the fire came down, in verse 4, in chapter 2, it says, when they were in the upper room, it says, and they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls. The fire is dunamis, and it diffuses throughout your soul to heal you of trauma. We're going to sing. If you have been wounded, if you've been molested, if you've been trafficked, if you've been abused, if you some sort of trauma, you need to run up to this altar because we're going to sing and we're going to get healed today. Any type of trauma that you've been through, if you had a relative that molested you, a close friend of the family or someone, or you went through an extended sickness with your family members and it traumatized and broke you, if you've experienced any deep trauma that you feel affected your heart, broke your heart, left a mark on you, flood this altar now, and we're going to sing right now. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Come on in. Everybody fill up the altar. Fill up the altar. Fill up the altar. Fill up the altar. Spread out. Come over this way and come over this way. Fill up the altar. Fill up the altar. Have the, have the um, ushers bring them around the altar. Bring them around. Bring them up. Bring them up. Everybody move up closer. Come, come up to the altar. Make room for your fellow people. Come on. Let's go. Bring over here. Come over here. Fill up the altar. Fill up the altar. Fill up the altar. Fill up the altar. You're going to get healed tonight. And I speak against every evil altar of trauma that's inside of you. And it's going to be healed right now in the name of Jesus now. 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 Oh, we believe in the mountains shake before you. The demons run and flee. Ministry team, come on. Stay! 
So this is the day that my sadness and my disappointment is seen by the Lord. And he is coming like Daddy God to heal me, to protect me, to deliver me from all affliction. Now say, I break my agreement with offense, with bitterness. I break my agreement with bitterness and rebellion. I break my agreement with the witchcraft spirit, the serpent spirit, the idolatrous spirit that's trying to control our world. I have nothing in me now that's in common with those spirits trying to overtake my world and my nation. Father, I thank you. You're delivering me now in the name of Jesus. Now put up your hands and now I'm going to pray for you. Put up your hands and receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every witchcraft spirit to come out. You come out. You come out. You come out. You come out.
if I, I if nobody's coming up after me, I'll keep going. <laughs> Just want to know. All right, turn towards your neighbor now. Until somebody comes up, I'm going to keep going. Turn towards your neighbor. Turn towards your neighbor. Lay hands on your neighbor and repeat after me. I'm ready whenever you're out. I'm just going to keep going until you stop me. The worship team is up now. Okay. All right. So just pray really quick then. Just say, I decree you are excellent soul. Say, I decree the Holy Spirit is going to keep flowing throughout your soul and your body for the rest of the day to make you excellent soul. Say, by the time you leave, my neighbor, you're going to be so healed that you're going to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now give God one more mighty shout of praise. Katie, 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 Katie. said, did you have a dream? The Lord said she had a dream. And I asked her if she had a dream, and she said, yes. She said, I was at my friend Katie's house. And it was about your land and your property. And the Lord began to show me a small fruit. And the Lord says the fruit that was small is about to expand. And the Lord says that you have been before your time. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to expand your borders beyond your wildest dreams. And the Lord says that many times people felt that you're too much. But the Lord says that you're not too much. The Lord says that you went into prisons. You went to the place where people have been forgotten about. But the Lord says, I'm taking you there to bring revival. And the Lord says that's about to expand in a greater way. And the Lord says, get prepared because the Lord says that you're about to take it to another level. And I'm about to cause a book to birth out of you. And the Lord says, daughter, you're way beyond time beyond your wildest dreams and the Lord says daughter you haven't seen it you haven't seen what I'm about to do in you and through you says the Lord and the Lord says daughter it's time to arise because I'm releasing power and strength dunamis power explosion within you and the Lord says that for years you thought your ministry has been silent but the Lord says, your ministry's not been silent. I've been shifting some things around you. I've been shifting areas. And the Lord says that people thought you were too much and weird. But the Lord says, you wasn't weird. You wasn't strange. You are right in time. And the Lord says, you were saying things and prophesying things that were beyond your time. And the Lord says, now the things that you prophesied years ago are now coming to fruition. And the Lord says, don't you get weary. It's time to run. And the Lord says, I'm about to explode even greater things. The Lord says, you've written books years ago that were under, that they didn't even get, uh, didn't even catch the wind. But those books are now going to catch the wind. And the Lord says, it's time to go back into the writing lab. And the Lord says, as you go back into the writing lab, I'm going to begin to download some things within you and around you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, no, but I'm changing the dimensions of who you are. It's going to be on the inside. And the Lord says, the doors are going to open. There's been some places that you can't get into. But the Lord says, I'm not going to open the doors for those to come forth. And I literally see the prison uh, uh, managers and coordinators and the warden coming to know me, says the Lord. But I'm getting ready to give you favor. You're going to set the table. What the others cannot set the table, I'm going to do it because you said yes. The Lord says, your life has been a hard road and you've been with power and authority people have talked about you they've lied on you they brought false accusations they're trying to steal from you but what the enemy has stolen i'm getting ready to return back a sevenfold return this is a season of suddenlies upon you and the lord says you're about to move in greater levels of signs wonders and miracles like captain coolen and the lord says i'm going to use you in a greater way he says, Katie, Katie, like the, the cadence, that's what I'm doing with 
with you. It's a ripple effect that's taken place and taken shape within you, says the Lord. And thus, the Lord, we loose this word, we charge her, and we activate it, and we call forth an apostolic anointing. You're an apostle. You are an apostle. And I call it forth, and I commission you this day as an apostle to the nations thereof. What a greater clarity and power like never before. And there's a cross-pollinating anointed on your life in a greater way, says the Lord. Come on, give them some praise. Come on, go ahead. Shandarabas. Rabas. 